Hey guys, welcome to my 2004 CLK 55 AMG. I bought this car about three months ago and believe it or not, I haven't touched it since. Um, the previous owner, he didn't touch it in quite a while either, so it looks pretty dirty. There's a lot of things that we need to do to it and in this series, we're gonna be going over everything from start to finish. So if you guys wanna come up close, we'll do a quick walkthrough and see uh, what needs to be done, which is basically everything. So let's take a look real quick. This is a 2004, like I said, CLK 55 AMG. Now it is the AMG version of this car, which means that it has a special, um, it's a special, I guess, race model. Um, it's a little more tuned to go fast. It has a large engine, um, same chassis as a CLK, but it does have a 5.5 liter uh, V8. It was hand built in Germany, in a Falterbach, Germany. And somehow they squeezed that giant engine in this little tiny car. So it's, uh, it's actually pretty fast. Um, it has pretty classic styling. I like the way it looks. It just has a lot of dirt on it. So let's take a look real quick. Um, as you can see, it rained here not too long ago. So there's some water spots, stuff like that. Um, if we get a little closer, the body has been through some hard times. It has about 125,000 miles is when I bought it. And there's some loose pieces that will need to be fixed as well as just general dirt and grime all around the car. If you take a look at these wheels, they at one point were chrome. <laughs> They're not that chrome anymore, but we're going to get them back looking uh, chrome in no time. Um, they're special edition Lorenzer wheels. I was not a huge fan of these wheels to start off, but I'm thinking maybe once they clean up, I might uh, like them a little more. But when I bought the car, I was hoping that they were, um, you know, like the OEMs were still with the car. They weren't. So eventually I'd like to get new wheels. But um, once we clean these up, we'll kind of assess them, see what they look like. I don't know what the condition is underneath. Um, maybe I'll warm up to them once they, once they get a little cleaner. Keeping uh, walking around, in, around the car, you'll see a lot more dirt, especially in the back. That's because when you drive around, obviously a lot of that dirt and grime gets kicked up, especially from these extra wide tires. Uh, this car is rear wheel drive um, and those Lorenzer wheels are um, uh, a little bit wider than stock and larger as well. They're 19 inches. Uh, there's a lot of nice little touches and AMG flourishes around the car. So in addition to putting larger engines in the cars, uh, AMG, uh, the subdivision of Mercedes also uh, accents the car with special AMG parts. So you'll see these special uh, dual exhaust right here. So it's kind of cool because they're branded. They say AMG on them. Uh, so it's really uh, awesome attention to detail that uh, you don't really see a lot of other places. With AMG, they really go the extra mile. Um, if you were to look at the CLK 500, which is, I guess, a step below this car, it doesn't, it's not the special AMG version, you'll see it only has a single exhaust. And then if you go even a step below that, which is the CLK 320, which has the V6, um, I believe it has an even smaller single exhaust. Wow, someone wants to challenge uh, the new V8. <laughs> so if we come back to this wheel, you'll see the same thing, a lot of um, super dirty. You'll see the barrels are even dirtier. I don't know if the previous owner ever washed these at all. Um, one feature that I, well, probably the only feature I like about these wheels is that they have these cool little uh, bolts around the entire perimeter of the wheel, which I think, um, I don't know, it, it's another attention to detail thing. They even have a little text on the, uh, on the bolts, which looks really cool. Um, hopefully those will clean up as well. And there's actually like I don't know if the owner, previous owner, like drove through paint or something, but there's all these little white specks everywhere. Um, not sure what that is, but you can see it's on the paint as well. So you have it on the wheels and the paint and the felt liner as well. Very strange, but um, I'm sure that will clean up with the right uh, combo of products. So going to the top of the car, you see lots of um, water spots, dust, grime, stuff like that. Uh, the previous owner did apologize when I bought the car that the car wasn't clean when I bought it. I didn't really care because I knew that we were going to be doing this series anyway, but he did make it known that he hadn't cleaned it in quite a while. Um, totally fine with me though. This color, I forgot to check the color. <laughs> we'll put it right here, <laughs> the official Mercedes color, but it's kind of a unique color in that it's a uh, brownish silver. Uh, so it does hide dirt really well. So even though this paint is filthy, it doesn't look that dirty and it doesn't look that bad either kind of cool um, it will be helpful later but we definitely want to um, not only give it a wash but also a clay a polish all that stuff to get it back to looking as amazing as it once did when it left the factory uh, coming back to the front of the car uh, more of the same I'm surprised these headlights still look really good I would have think they would have faded by now but for some reason they still look great so they're not going to need uh, very much work there uh, you'll see some little black specks around here not sure what those are oh it's, it's all over here too 
um, but those should come off with a thorough uh, wash what we're about to do um, so as you guys can tell there's nothing drastic about this car that's like super terrible it's not a salvage title um, it doesn't deserve to go to the junkyard it's a very deserving car of a full uh, detail and polish um, there's just a lot of little stuff a lot of built-up stuff uh, I think once we do like a big um, kind of like a big full A to Z detail then we just maintain it from then on out and it should be a, a really great car uh, just to kind of go over my favorite things about the car before we get started, just so you guys can have some logic as to why I bought this car. Um, I'm coming from a 2013 Scion FRS, which is a great car, but it's a very, it's a very specific car. It's a very great car at certain things. So it's a great Canyon Carver. It's a great car for the track. It handles like no other car. It's probably one of the best handling cars um, that exist today. Except the problem with that car is that I live in Los Angeles and most of my day is spent in stop and go traffic, in boulevards, on streets, uh, stuff like that. Uh, it is a stick shift, so I just find myself doing this all day. First gear, neutral, first gear, neutral. Um, that car is severely underpowered. It has a two liter flat four uh, with 200 horsepower and even less torque. I think it's around like 150 or 160 foot pounds of torque. So that thing is not fast. I don't know how else to say it. It's not fast. Um, so for just everyday driving, I wanted something that had a little more torque, a little more power, a little more fun in the straight lines, more comfortable, you know, more luxurious, has more creature comforts, and this car fit the car, uh, fit the bill perfectly. I didn't want to break the bank. Also, I wanted something that was affordable. Um, I wanted something German. Uh, I've never had a German car before, but ever since I was a kid, German cars have always been my favorite German and Italian cars. Um, Italian cars are a little bit harder to come by at this price point though, <laughs> at least good ones. Um, so I settled on this car, uh, which is a great option because there's many things that I love about it. So if I were to count down my top three things about this car that I love, obviously the engine. Basically the engine is the heart of any AMG car. Uh, the M113K, uh, actually sorry, the M113 engine, um, it's not the M113K, that's the supercharged one which you find in this car's older brothers. This one just has the regular naturally aspirated M113. Um, that engine is uh, a true uh, work of art. It has about 362 horsepower and I believe uh, around 400 foot pounds of torque. So it's quite fast even for being you know, a 2004 model. It's loads faster than the FRS. It's a lot of fun to drive, a real joy to drive. It's great around these, um, you know, these, these straight roads uh, around here in Los Angeles. Um, so that's probably the first thing that I love. The second thing I love is this uh, pillarless design. So as you guys can see, it does not have a B pillar right here. So typical cars, they'll have an A pillar right here. They'll have a B pillar right here and a C pillar right here. Um, this car does not have a B pillar at all. So it's a real seamless design. It's almost like a hard top convertible in this sense. So I could just take my hand and go all the way through like this. And if you stand back a little bit, it really gives the car a unique, um, a unique appearance unlike any other. I don't think you really see this in any other cars uh, besides these Mercedes uh, CLK, uh, CL class, and then also the new, the newer E class Mercedes. Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of another car that uh, has that feature. A lot of older cars, like muscle cars from the '60s, uh, they were like that, but for some reason they phased that out, and now it's pretty hard to find. So, guys, I know that was kind of a long intro, but um, now it's time to get started. So. Uh, like most details, we're going to start on the wheels because that's the dirtiest part and definitely for this car uh, that, uh, that stays true because these wheels are absolutely filthy. Um, I look forward to cleaning them and seeing how nice they turn up. So uh, we'll start with the wheels and then we'll foam the body and then we'll go from there.
Hey guys, so I just finished the wheel and it looks great. It, uh, just a regular cleaning really brought back a lot of the shine. And I think that uh, some heavy metal polish is really gonna do wonders to really uh, bring out the shine even more on these wheels. Uh, I like them better already. Who knows, maybe we'll keep them. Um, while I'm down here, I just wanted to give you guys a little pro tip about uh, brushes. So the two brushes I'm gonna, I use today are this flag tip brush and then this, stiffy, uh, this stiff brush right here. Um, what a flag tip means is, I'm gonna have to get really close, but I'll show you guys. The edges of the bristles are actually intentionally frayed. And so you wanna use that on more sensitive surfaces because what that does is it, it, um, it makes the end not as stiff, softer, and it also spreads out the, uh, the force. So it, it's even more gentle for those uh, shiny surfaces, those, sensitive, those uh, surfaces that are more prone to scratching. And then if you look here, this is just a regular uh, bristled brush. The ends are not frayed. So this is a stiffer brush and that will be used for the tire and stuff like that. Um, surfaces that are not as sensitive and that need a little bit more scrubbing. So just a little uh, pro tip for you guys. Next time you guys clean your wheels, uh, remember that. All right guys, so now that my wheels are nice and clean, we're gonna move on to my favorite part of the wash, which is the foaming part. Now, this car hasn't been foamed or washed in a very long time, so we're gonna take utmost precaution when we proceed to this step. Uh, what that means is we're gonna be rinsing it uh, real fast to get all the major dirt and debris off the car to minimize the chance of swirls and scratches. And then we're gonna be foaming it once, just as almost like a pre-foam, rinsing it off, foaming it again, and then going to scrubbing the car. So let's get to it. All right guys, as you can see here, I'm adding some honeydew snow foam and some clean slate into my big mouth foam cannon. Now, honeydew is gonna do a great job at shooting some thick, rich suds all over my car. And in addition to that, I'm gonna be using just a little bit of clean slate. Clean slate is a great additive that I can add to my soap that's gonna strip off any old waxes, any old glazes or sealants on my car. Being that this is a new car, I'm not sure what's left on the paint, so I'm using this as a great option and a great method of stripping off all that old stuff off so I know that I'm really starting all over again. Now, you guys are gonna see me foam the car once and then rinse it off, and that's really just knocking off the biggest uh, pieces of dirt, grime, debris, and all that stuff, and then I'm gonna foam it a second time and only once, I, once I'm done foaming in the second time, am I actually gonna go in with my wash mitt um, and really scrub the surface. All right guys, so you might ask, why am I foaming my car like this? What's the purpose of foaming your car? Well, what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna encapsulate all those little particles of dirt, debris, and pollution inside the bubbles of the foam and make the surface super slippery, which means that I could rub my wash mitt over the surface without having to worry about scratching or swirling my paint. All right guys, so using the two bucket method, I'm gonna foam up my Chanel wash mitts and then scrub the surface of my car. As you guys can see, I'm using straight lines, which is gonna be the safest and best way to clean my car without installing any swirls and scratches. As you guys notice, I'm gonna be cleaning my car from top down and that's to work most efficiently and not waste any soap and just make the job a lot easier. If I don't do that, then I'm gonna be cleaning the bottom of my car first and then clean the top part of my car, which is gonna make all the clean surface on the bottom get dirty again.
guys, so I'm going to be using the Wooly Mammoth drying towel to dry my car. Now, the great thing about this towel is it's huge. It's huge, it's extra soft, and it holds up to a gallon of water, which means that I'm going to be able to dry my car in as little as time as possible. As you guys can see, I start at the top and then work my way down the car to dry it in as little bit amount of time as possible. All right guys, so that concludes the wash of the uh, CLK 55 AMG. It was tons of fun. And as you guys can see, it did a huge transformation. All it was was a wheel clean and a wash and it already looks so much better. Um, but what I really love now is that now we kind of have a baseline, kind of a clean slate where we could go in and look at everything that needs to be done before uh, all the defects, all the swirls, all the scratches were hidden by uh, dirt, grime, dust, stuff like that. Now we can really go in there and see what we're working with. Um, like I suspected, there's nothing super crazy that is going to need to be done. It's a lot of little stuff. Um, off the, right off the bat, I see a lot of scratches right here uh, in the door handle. That's from people with long nails going in and jabbing their hands in like this and then scratching um, the inner part of the door handle right there. So uh, that will clean up with just some compound and polish. Um, the wheels also cleaned up very nice. Uh, however, I do see lots of uh, small imperfections. It looks like a little oxidation, um, some spotting, stuff like that. So definitely some heavy metal polish and a ball buster or some sort of uh, uh, pad would work wonders there. I can't wait till that, how that looks once we're all done. I'm so excited to uh, get started on the next thing. I want to do it right now, but <laughs> it's going to get dark soon and I can't. <laughs> but I'm super excited to go to the next levels of this. We're going to be doing clean polishing, um, the wheels, the paint, getting all the details and then moving on to the interior, which I'm also super excited about because that's where I spend the most amount of time. And don't forget the engine. We're gonna be doing the engine as well, detailing that five and a half liter AMG V8 hand-built in Germany. Super excited about that. So stay tuned and we'll see you guys next time.